This is the second section of chapter three, equations and inequalities. And in this section, we're gonna be looking at quadratic simultaneous equations. So when we're trying to solve quadratic simultaneous equations, we're going to be taking a quadratic equation and a linear equation. And basically what we're doing, we're trying to find the point or points of intersection. So it could be that our quadratic and our linear equation cross each other at two points. So I'm expected from the simultaneous equations that I get two real solutions. It could be that our linear equation just touches the quadratic. Um, it would actually be a, a tangent to the quadratic at a particular point. And in this case, there would be one real or two repeated solutions. Or it may be that the linear equation does not intersect the quadratic at all. And in this case, there will be no real solutions. Now you may remember from section 2.5, we did this discriminant and we came up with these rules for um, classifying the number of roots that a quadratic has. Now this b squared minus 4ac this is going to come up from when we put the two equations together, we're going to get a quadratic and we can use that equation to decide how many roots or how many places the quadratic and the linear uh, equations have. OK, so let's just run through the steps to solve a linear and a quadratic equations. Now, these can't be solved on a calculator. You can solve linear equations or you could solve a quadratic or cubic, but you can't solve simultaneously a linear with a quadratic on a calculator. So these do need to be done manually. So the first thing we would do is to rearrange the linear equation to make X or Y the subject. And we want to choose the, the most straightforward way of doing that. So for example, if I've got a linear equation and um, in that linear equation, I've just got X. I haven't got like two X or three X, just X. Then I'd make X the subject. Uh, similarly, if I had just Y in the linear equation, it would be easier to make Y the subject. Now that's not always the case, um, but always look to see which is the more, most straightforward way of doing it. The next step is that we substitute this, so that linear equation that we've rearranged to make x or y the subject, we substitute this into the quadratic equation. So you may have quite a complicated looking expression, this quadratic that's got all these linear bits in it. Then the next step is to simplify this new quadratic, the one that we've just got from the last step. It, uh, brackets will need expanding and it will need simplifying. And we want to find its roots. Now I've done arrows going from this uh, part here to um, the the discriminant which we talked about before this is the quadratic here once we've simplified it that's going to tell us what types of roots if any the quadratic and the linear equation have in other words how many points that they intersect at so it's this quadratic here once we've simplified it that we can look at b squared minus 4ac and we can then determine, right, do the quadratic and the linear equation cross in two points? Does it just touch at one point? Is it a tangent to the quadratic? Tangents will come up later on in the book um, and that will make a bit more sense at that point. Or is it that the quadratic and the linear equation do not touch or intersect at all? And then finally, our last step is going to be that we substitute any roots uh, into the linear equation. So any roots that we get at this point here in step number three, we substitute that into the linear equation that we have and that will give us the remaining uh, values. Example three, solve the simultaneous equations. So we have x plus 2y is equal to three and we have x squared plus 3xy is equal to 10. So our first step is going to be to rearrange the linear equation. And that is our one at the top here. Here's our linear equation. 
we want to rearrange that to make x or y the subject. Now, it would make more sense to make x the subject rather than y, because if I make x the subject, I just need to take away 2y from both sides rather than um, take x away from both sides and divide by 2. Doesn't matter either way, but we want to make the work as easy as possible. So I will have x is equal to 3 minus 2y. So it's this equation that's going to get substituted into my quadratic. So everywhere that I see x, I'm going to put 3 minus 2y. So let's do that. So we will have not x squared, but 3 minus 2y squared. That's my substitution. Plus 3 times x, so 3 times by 3 minus 2y times by y is equal to 10. So this needs expanding and simplifying. So we'll expand this part first. So we've got um, 3 minus 2y times by 3 minus 2y. So that will be 9. Let's just do it over here. So 9. So I've just done that one. And then 3 times by minus 2y. So that's minus 6y. Then expand that. Then another minus 6y. And then negative 2y times by negative 2y is going to be plus 2y squared. Sorry, plus 4y squared. 4y squared. And then I need to expand this bracket here. And then that needs to get times by y as well. So what I could do is, uh, well, actually, no, what I'll do is this. So plus 9 minus 6y. And then that needs to get times by y. What I was going to say was I could have thought this just as 3y and bought the y over here and do 3y times that and then 3y times the negative 2y. Right, let's see what we get when we do that. So uh, 9 is the first term. Then negative 6y minus 6y is minus 12y plus 4y squared. And then expanding the brackets again. I'll have 9y, so I'm doing this here, and then minus 6y squared. So minus 6y squared is equal to 10. Now I'm going to bring the 10 over, so it's minus 10 equals 0. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to simplify this quadratic. So I have 4y squared minus 6y squared which is negative 2y squared. So I've dealt with um, this term and this term. Now let's look at the y's. So I've got negative 12y plus 9y, which is going to be negative 3y, so minus 3y. And then I have 9 minus 10. So let's just highlight those in different color. So that's 9 there, negative 10, that's minus 1, is equal to 0. Now, I don't like negatives all over the place, so I'm going to times everything by negative 1, and I'll get 2y squared plus 3y plus 1 equals 0. So this is what I want to find the roots of. So if I wanted to find out how many places this line and this quadratic crossed in, I would use the discriminant on this. I'd do b squared minus 4ac and see whether it's positive, negative, or equal to zero. I don't need to do that. I just need to solve it. Now, at this point, I could use my calculator to find the roots of this, but I'm going to factorize it. I don't think it should be too difficult. So it's going to be 2y and y. And I want 1, so it has to be 1 and 1. And I want plus 3. So that means that um, both of them are plus, aren't they? So it's easy enough. So from there, I've got 2y plus 1 is equal to 0, which means that 2y is equal to negative 1. 
which means that y is equal to negative a half. And then from the other bit, I've just got y plus 1 is equal to 0 from the second bracket. So y is equal to negative 1. So at this moment in time, what I've got is my two values of y. I now need to find my values of x by substituting those values of y into my linear equation. And I'll use this form here because the y can just go straight in. And what we need to remember is that the values of x need to match up with the values of y. So I need to make sure that the value of x, for example, that I get from y is minus a half, goes with this answer. They're going to go together in pairs. So let's do that. So I'll take the y is minus a half and substitute that into x is equal to 3 minus 2y. So that will be x is equal to 3 minus 2 times by y, which is going to be negative a half. So from there, I'll get x is equal to 3. Now, um, let's see, negative 2 times by negative a half, that's going to be plus 1. So 3 plus 1, x is 4. So let me write down my first pair of answers, and that is x equals 4 goes with y is equal to negative a half. So that's my first pair of answers. So do make sure that you don't mix up the values of x and y and just think, oh, OK, well, it doesn't matter which goes with it. It does. And then the last bit I need to do is to take my other value of y, which was negative 1. So y equals negative 1. And substitute that into the linear, rearranged linear, x is equal to 3 minus 2y. So that would be x is equal to 3 minus 2 times by y, which is negative 1. So that would be x is equal to 3. And then negative 2 times by negative 1 is plus 2. So I have x is equal to 5. So my other solution is going to be x is equal to 5 is going to go with y is equal to negative 1. So there are my two pairs of solutions. So if I were to draw this quadratic and this linear graph or, or this linear equation, they would be crossing in two points. These are the equations of the points where the linear graph and a quadratic graph cross. And actually, if I were to go back to that new quadratic that I created, and that was here, this one here, if I, or, or actually I could use this form here, if I did b squared minus 4ac on this, I would get a value um, which is greater than zero, telling me this has got two real roots, and I can see them here, two real roots, two points of intersection. So you should now be able to do exercise 3b on pages 41 to 42 of the textbook.